Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We got ourselves a big best of five series here. It's the round of eight of ESL Winter in the top right side of the map. We've got Basilisk Serral. The Finnish Phenom, widely uh, thought of as the greatest of all time in StarCraft, though. Any discussion about greatest of all time, I think, in just about any competition is always at least slightly controversial. His opponent in the top left is the reigning world champion, Oliveira, representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. And he's going for a single proxy barracks. So I believe this is a, a forward double reaper opening. I think he goes two reapers out of this barracks. Looks to put on a bit more pressure than normal. And then is kind of greedy behind it. The problem is, Serral's first overlord finds it. Now, Oliveira, I'm not sure if he saw that overlord. It kind of came close, but realized the barracks when it's building has very little vision. Likewise, an SCV. You see, look at that, that vision circle, the SCV and the barracks. Now compare that to the Overlord. Way longer sight range there. The SCV now sees the Overlord. He knows he's been spotted. That Reaper did start about half a second late, though. Only starting at 1 minute 31. Could have started that a couple seconds earlier, of course. It's not the biggest commitment either way. So we'll see exactly where this opening takes us. Serral is moving out with a drone. Looking like he wants to defend the SCV, but he also could head to take a third base. So far, not pulling off gas. Serral has to make that decision now. He might think this is a proxy two racks and that he only found one of them, but I think seeing one barracks on its own like that is in itself kind of a big tell that something is going on. And he says, you know what? Let's not risk it. No reason to risk it. I don't have lings out. Let's build six lings, two queens. Leave me workers on gas. Let's make lings speed. And actually, funnily enough, he's still remaining on gas. I guess that's because he's not safe to rally down to the natural. But as these lings come out and the queens going to go after the SCV. Doesn't want to let that bunker build up. I like that he pulled this weak Zergling away from the Reaper, but in the same uh, move, he's also used it to threaten the SCV a little more, which has made this uh, a bit more chill. He says, okay, well, if you're going to chase that, yes, you get to kill two Zerglings, but I get to clear the bunker. And he's already building eight more Zerglings in a Baneling Nest? Okay, okay, Zarel has decided, I don't care if you're building two Reapers or whatever, you've proxied it out of the map. And in fact, it is only one Reaper, one Marine. Factory's on the way, but he knows... Oh, because he has to build a reactor on the factory. A reactor takes 30 seconds, six, uh, 36 seconds to build, which means he's basically going to be behind about four Hellions. It is a three command center build. A bit of aggression to throw Serral off into extreme greed is a very common style players choose against him, and that's the reactor that Serral predicted. Oliveira does not know about the fact that Serral is doing a Baneling boss. He says, I'm going to go completely all in. I do not care. My name is Serral. I have realized if you're going to proxy a single barracks, this is a sort of cheeky build where you're doing the minimal commitment to try and put me on the defensive. How about I just kill you? You're doing something a bit cheeky. How about I just kill you? And recognizing what's happening is huge. Now, look at this. These links come into the middle and link speed finishes, but Serral only shows four links. The rest of them have already snuck around that left side and he's morphing Banelings in a nice forward location. Now he's trying to deny the Watchtower vision. Oh, I think Oliveira should realize what's up. He's got to get a bunker right now on that high ground. SCV's evacuating. Oliveira, okay. I think this might be an early enough scout. What he needs to do is build Engineering Bay, though. He's got enough money. Engineering Bay goes there. He needs he needs an Engineering Bay down here as well. That's not going to completely wall it. you got to completely wall this, Ollie. He's got a Liberator on the way. Reaper and Marine are getting a little bit of damage. The Reaper's not actually fighting right now. Hellions do pop out behind the wall in, which will hang on for a moment. He's got to get to the mineral line, though. If those Hellions go down, he's done for. SCVs turn to fight. Those front SCVs may need to pull back. There's Banelings in the mineral line. Uh-oh. This is why he needed the wall off. There's just too much Ling Bane compared to just two Hellions and a few SCVs. Oliveira's SCVs and Hellions starting to take massive damage. The Lings doing a massive impact. There is a Marine, a Marauder, and a Hellion out here, but 26 workers going down. I mean, this was a massive commitment for Serral. But if you get your opponent down to five workers, it might just be game winning. There's five workers against 21. Several started building drones by it. He's got another big pack of Zerglings on the map. So he can group up. If he could surround the Hellions, then he could just win the game. Obviously, I think the third orbital didn't get made. And that means no triple mules. He's just building SCVs, dropping two mules at a time as he can. Oliveira going to counterattack. That means he's leaving himself wide open with no wall off. The Marine and the Marauder are surroundable right there. Oh, Oliveira leaving himself with his pants down. If he floated the starport down, maybe, just maybe, that was a little bit too greedy. Serral takes a map of one. Very decisively punishing Oliveira for being a bit too cheeky. All right, well, that one didn't go the way he wanted. However, Oliveira did a very cheeky build on a map which wasn't really good for Terran. Equilibrium is often considered to be the massively favored Zerg map. There's a reason Serral picked that as his first map in this series. 
And even more wild that he chose to do something which you could argue it's quite risky going for that sort of Baneling bust. I think Oliveira scouting the links on the Watchtower, if he had quickly done an emergency wall off, it could have worked. But it was always going to be tough in that scenario because as we saw, the one engineering bay didn't even seal off one side, let alone the other side. So he really needed to full wall the base. Several does risk it, says, I don't care if it's my map, I will go for the highly aggressive build. And it does pull it off. Oliver is now on hard lead though. Hard lead's good for Terran. I always feel like Terran's got a pretty good shot on this map. We've seen Beyond Make Magic happen with multi prong just dropping in from all sides, darting in with Marines. There's beautiful tank locations up here on the high ground. Uh, if they're pushing this right side, we often see a siege tank behind there. And then maybe another one down here. Uh, Bio Mine can be really good as well. Not to say that it's uh, obscenely favored, but simply to make the argument here for the fact that losing your opponent's favorite map is not too bad of a start for Oliveira. It's going to be going for a no SCV scout, one racks expand. This is a good call. I don't think you need to SCV scout against Serral. He very rarely does a pool first or early pool strategy. So it's a good idea to mix this in more often than not. You only really want to SCV scout maybe one in every three or four games for Serral, just to make sure he, you know, if you never SCV scout, he will pick up on that pattern. He might go spawning pool first, run six or eight zerglings across and cancel your command center. The reason you can do that, of course, for those who are rookies, is the Reaper's your first scout. So the Lings would go around the map, and then just as the Reaper arrives, the Lings would run in. But that's not what's going to be happening this time. Drone moving out to the third, pulling off gas, immediate Ling speed, super safe opening for Serral. I love that this old school fast Ling speed build is back in. It's, it's back in popularity, back in vogue due to the fact that, uh, the T-Rex Reaper shenanigans have been out of control. Zergling's trying to micro back. Ooh. Oh. Okay, that Reaper's gonna have a bit of fun. Good job with Serral there getting on the extractor to save it. And immediately injects. Now you might be wondering why didn't he spread creep on the natural? Because he realizes he wants extra lava popping out here, because they're all gonna be making drones this early in the game. And he wants the drones to pop out as close to these minerals as possible, because the main is already full of workers. That way he brings the second queen down, still gets the creep tumor, even though it's a little delayed. Um, but he gets this, these drones popping out in the correct location. You've also got to account for the fact that against top level Terrans, the Reaper can snipe that creep tumor. You can only really protect it once you've got two queens on the natural. So you have to wait for that queen anyway. Therefore, at the top level, the creep tumor isn't even technically delayed. Bit of a wordy way of saying it, but uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the extra details that I'm explaining, maybe a little bit poorer than I normally do. I'm still a little bit uh, stuffed filled with Christmas food, um, lots of bloody rum soaked, uh, you know, balls, uh, sh sherry soaked cake, biscuits, chocolate, bloody bit of cannibalism as well with the pork. It's been, it's been a good Christmas. It's been, been very chill, very nice so far. I hope you've all had a, a great holiday season, kind of end of the year so far. It's, uh, been nice and hot for us recently and now in this Christmas week it's kind of like non-stop storms and rain which seems to be a, a pattern over the last 10 years is every Christmas time it's always a rainy Christmas whereas I remember when I was a little kid I feel like it, it was actually hot it is the middle of summer for us but uh, for some reason it's always cloudy and whatnot now it's going to be a banshee build no cloak just yet but that's because he doesn't have the gas for it I love this overlord coming in the back something I saw one Terran start to do I think it was beyond after doing the barracks build off, he builds a second depot down here so the Overlord can't sneak past. But Oliveira only oh, finds out about it now. And that is a fake upgrade, guys. That is not Cloak. In response to seeing the Overlord, he starts the Interference Matrix upgrade just to show an upgrade to make him think, oh yeah, this is Cloaked Banshees. But he's only going to build one for safety, cancel it. Instead, he's going to get Stim, start building reactors, extra barracks, engineering base, and just kind of progress immediately to that next stage of the game. Now, there is eight Hellions out, which is nothing to scoff at. They definitely could do some damage. Roach Warren finishing right now. There's only 12 Zerglings. So if Serral can get a few Roaches, that should make him feel quite safe against the Hellion count. Siege tanks building. Second and third barracks on the way. Third gas goes down. Hellion's going to start to roam forward. Lair is on the way for Serral. How many Queens did he go? Seven. I think seven is a good number. If you're going to go Ling Speed... With this style, you'd like to pretend you're not building roaches and then only show them at the last second. If you can hide it from the Terran, it's really good. Uh, it might bait them into attacking into you. We all know that roach players love a Terran throwing a big attack into them. Roach Ravager is an amazing defensive composition. Two engineering bays go down. Fourth and fifth barracks already building. So we can see the lack of the cloak in the second banshee saves 250 minerals and 200 gas. 
Banshee getting some nice damage over on the fourth base. Unlikely to kill it. Unit's lost tab is not amazing for Oliveira. I don't think he minds with how efficient his build's been, though. His 1-1's one already started. Evo Chamber's only just begun for Serral. Like, if I just looked at the timings, I'd say Serral's build's been, yeah, perfect. But, yeah. I mean, if, if, if there was a second Banshee and Cloak, I'd be feeling bad about this for Oliveira. As it is, I do think Serral might have a small lead. Just, I mean, 18 worker advantages. Nothing to scoff at. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big, right? Six more drones coming in as well. He's like, no, no, no. I want to keep that above 20 worker advantage. I'm like, okay, buddy. That's kind of kind of dirty. Infestation pits already on the way for Serral. I think I would imagine Serral's going to play the style. Him, him, Rainer, and a bunch of other players love this these days. I've never been the biggest fan. Um, it's going to be 1-1 one, one Roach Ravager into Ling Bane Hive. Um, I always feel like the Banelings are almost worthless with this style. There's, there's like this period in the medium term where having a few Infestors out would be really good for at least force the Terran to spread out their units, maybe land a Fungal here or there, but mostly just force them to be careful. Whereas I feel like Banelings against a committed 2-2 push, which is almost always what these sort of Terran styles end up doing against a Roach Ravager players, trying to hit like 180 Supply, 2-2 Upgrades, Marine Tank. Well, your Banelings just get stuck behind your Roach Ravager. And when they do come in, they're not in high enough numbers to get forward. So... I, I would love to see Serral maybe just rush Lurker Viper. Stay with more of a, like a Roach Hydra based army. We do see that Hive on the way. He's mixing in a few Zerglings as well. I mean, Zerglings are good for tanking uh, Siege Tank shots. So they can be useful in small numbers. Bit of a shield for your army. Hive's on the way. Four more drones coming in right now. 75 drones are up. We've got an extra gas on that right side. Two gases on the left. So seven gas. There we go. Banely Nest is on the way. Yeah. I've, I've seen Serral win a ton of games with this style. So as much as I say I don't like it, it's not like every game the Banelings are useless. Um, but I'd say a lot more than half the Banelings don't feel particularly effective. You always want Banelings eventually, because once you're maxed out, they are the most supply efficient unit. But I feel like they're much better once you get rid of most of the Roaches and you only have a few Ravages left. And otherwise, it's mostly like a Ling Bane Viper army, something like that. If he gets to Ultras, that's also going to be scary for Oliveira. Oliveira does not really have uh, the... I mean, it does not really have... He definitely does not have his uh, Marauder production up. He's still only on the initial five barracks, which is usually one tech lab, four reactors, as you can see. Second factory is on the way. Uh, plus two armor starts, but not plus two attack. Oh, Oliveira, please notice that. Remember, Ollie was far ahead on the upgrades. He no longer is. He starts vehicle weapons, but no plus two weapons. Okay, there we go. He does now start that up. Pretty decent marine tank push with one, one going down the left side. Vipers are on the way as well as a bunch of Banelings, but Baneling speed is miles away. Banelings are definitely not going to be useful in this game. Ooh, Roach is coming in for a bit of a flank. I like the Biles. He gets one tank, barely doesn't get the second tank. Nice positioning for Serral. Serral's going to have to cancel this base. Problem is, I don't know if he can fight this right now. I think he needs another minute to get those Vipers out. He's going to try to buy time, but oh, he runs forward, sacrifices the Ravager. Well worth it for the tank, and actually the Ravager somehow survives. Daredevil, can't believe it. He might have to run drones away from this base. This is a scary moment right here for Serral. He ends up going forward, but slow Banelings. Not to mention Zerglings into Ravages. Not that great. Double Liberator in the north. The Double Liberator in the north is so powerful. Serral's going to have to abandon this base. The Liberator's starting to get massive damage in the backside. 11 workers have gone down. The Queen's starting to take damage. Ravages are fighting. 13 workers have fallen. Oh, Mio oh Maya Viper pops out. Another one. Uh, one of them goes down. One of them still has energy. But the Marines just stim forward in a ball. Don't tell me that's enough. The Roaches have come in from behind. It looks like, no, Serral is able to stabilize, but there's more units coming behind. More Marine Tank coming in. We've got extra Barracks building right now as well. He's going up to eight Barracks. The fourth Command Center has landed. 73 workers. A fifth Command Center on the way. The creep getting cleared. Serral's back to four base versus four base. Never good for Zerg, especially not when your army is mostly Roach Ravager with a single Viper. And I, I definitely feel like this sort of timing that Oliveri hit is perfect. And it showcases the weakness of Serral's style, where, like I said, I feel like just having a couple of Infestors and instead of having a quicker transition um, or, or basically just having pure Lings, you know, Roach Ravager into just Zerglings and then uh, trying to get up to the Ultras would be a little better. I, ultras are further away, so you're even more open to a timing window, I think, would be the counter-argument to that. And it's a fair counter-argument. It's hard to get to Ultras in time and... Maxing out on 80, 90 drones, 10 queens, and then just zerglings and roaches is not a very supply efficient army. So uh, I can understand why you want those banelings. Maybe just get baneling speed a little bit quicker solves these issues that I've been talking about. Oh, is that going to die? Ollie, unlo unload, unload. Oh, looks like he was calculated. Now, Serral's still hanging on. you got to be careful about giving Serral space to recover here. 
2-2 has just finished. Concussive Shells has been remembered. Uh, the Marauder count is starting to grow a little. Oliveira is maxed out. He wants to keep pushing here. I would love to see him really force the issue. Oh, a bit slow on those stim on those Marines up the front. Takes a few big banelings to uh, about 15 Marines going down. I mean, he can replace them pretty quickly. It's not the end of the world losing a few of them. But on that right side, his third's wide open. And there are Zergling Baneling in that right side. Getting ready to potentially do a run by Serral. Full link back with his drones. Plus two melee, plus three carapace. Both started, but they're not there. Right now, it's 1-2 against 2-2. Two, two. The sensor tower sees everything coming. We're going to see the F2 back to defend. Good choice by Oliveira. Just scramble over there as quickly as possible. And with that Widow Mine, ooh, not quite able to fire. Vipers run forward. A few Marauders go down, but the Siege Tanks have already unseaged and pulled back. He didn't end up killing the Hatchery. Serral saves that. Once this base is up, he is technically on five Hatchery mining. 73 workers only. Serral needs to buy more time with only one Viper. Oh, this is tough. That tank positioning is really, really good right now. I like the Ling Bane flank coming in from the right side, though. Here we go. Serral's going to go for it. The Banelings are a little behind. Blinding Cloud's going down on some of these tanks. Roach, Ravager, Ling Bane. Beautiful engagement for Serral. Oh, man. Very nice angling. The Banelings do get cleaned up by the Siege Tanks off Creep, though, and the Marine Marauder. The Roach Ravager, of course, will cleave through. The Siege Tank will go down. The Dregs of the Bio do get picked up. Link's getting the Mineral Land at the same time. Serral, you absolute monster. And he's fighting back in this game. He does have Burrow on the way, as well as a random Swarm Host, a second Viper rebuilding right now. I do love that choice. He's got to respread his creep, though. That's the tough thing, is he's only got two Queens. He's only got two Queens. He's got a few active Tumors. At least he's got one here, one here. So that's still spreading. And he's got one in the middle. Does need a new Tumor on the left side as well. But that's expensive. And he's already broke right now. Being locked on even supply against a now five base Terran. You're only on five bases. And this hatchery is in the red. Which means it could die so easily. But I love the Infestors coming in. I, it's only one for now. Definitely want to see a few more of those Infestors. If he can max out with Infestors. Respread a little bit of creep though. We're just going to see an even late game. And I don't know if Oliveira can beat Serral there. That's no sh uh, hatred on Oliveira or shade thrown uh, across his skill. It's just that it's Serral. He's one of the best late game players in the world. And oh, that Widow Mine not quite able to fire. Oliveira's got some Widow Mines here, though. Gets a shot there on the Roach Ravager. That one fires on the Banelings as well. Saves a few of the Marines. Does dance around. Same time, dropping the main base. Got to watch out. Does save most of those units. Units lost tab has been 3,000 resources in favor of Oliveira. It's decent, but nothing too crazy. That being said, against a Roach Ravager army, the Zerg supply is not as high on the drones usually. Ooh, Zerg needs a bit more efficiency playing this style. He's actually down 10 workers right now in this game, so Terran almost can play like the Zerg. He can be a bit more swarmy, a bit more kind of diving in from different sides. Uh, he has killed 13 workers almost purely with Liberators this game. With two more Liberators out, I wouldn't mind seeing more of that from Ollie. Coming in behind with the libs while you're pushing the front. Puts the Zerg in a very frantic position where they simply can't do everything perfectly. Ooh. Loses a Ravager there to one of the libs. There we go. Gets one bile. He needs a few more, though. Liberator quick for the Unsiege. There we go. Nice micro for Serral. Does take out that Liberator. Oliveira coming forward. But here we go on the left side. We've got a Massling Bane attack coming into the planetary. At the same time, Serral runs forward. But he pulls back. That one's a bit of a fake out. This side pulls back as well. He feels he doesn't have enough Banelings to guarantee the, the planetary kill. He actually did have enough there. He could have committed to that. Here we go. Ling Bane Roach coming in. Does take out the Liberator. But look at that pullback. This tank on the back uh, ledge doing very nicely. Ling Bane come in. They get pushed back by another tank in a planetary. This is looking really awkward for Serral. The, the unit's lost. It's going to be getting worse here. He comes in on the south. He's got to get rid of this army, and he's got to do it soon. The tanks are getting picked off, but he's attacking around a corner. And look at the pullbacks on the Marine Marauder. The tanks focusing down so many of those Banelings. He does break this position, though. Serral, he's losing almost all of his army doing it, though. The Infestors were not able to really make a big impact there, and... This short push path for Oliveira is fantastic. He can re-siege in the exact same spot again. Some of the Widowmines survived that fight. We've got more Roaches, Lings, and Banes being built. I really don't think Roaches are where it's at in this sort of game, especially as the Liberators get added in. Ultralisks become an essential thing. Oh, two snipes on two of the Ravages! I think Oliveira has it now. He's just been too far ahead in economy for too long. It's not like he had any really glorious victory in these last few minutes in the engagements. But you can see it in the units lost. He's just a little bit more efficient each time. And he has a giant economy bind. 88 workers. A massive, massive amount of income. And look at that. I've been watching his army so much, but he's actually on six orbitals. He's got three factories, eight barracks, a starport pumping away nonstop. His 3 3 is done. He's got the plus two vehicle weapons. Serral is only about to get plus three melee. So he's been down in upgrades in most of the fights over the last few minutes. And 
I mean, how the hell do you hang on here, Rosero? You're down 50 supply, most of which is army supply. Yes, Oliver is pulling back because Rando, Calrissian, the Swarmost is harassing from the right side, but that's not going to keep him back for long. The tanks will push this right side. Roaches and Ravages into Ling Bane. It can be a very good composition, but Olivera showing an expert knowledge of how to dismantle this style and how to find the weak points. That being said, the Link Bane comes in. Parasitic Bomb on the Lib. There is not enough Zerglings. You need to swarm over that sort of army with overwhelming Zergling numbers, and Cyril just never had it. Olivera ties up the series one-to-one. -one. All right, that was a pretty sick map there for Olivera. Very clean. That first push was so powerful, hitting... As his opponent was in the middle of trying to swap sideways off Roach Ravager into Ling Bane. Oliveira finds himself a big advantage. Saril in the bottom left going for a spawning pool first. I said, uh, you know, we talked about how in that last game you don't need to STV scout versus Saril. Uh, but there is a reason normally, and that's to check, is it pool first? Uh, technically, there's some one base all-ins like Proxy Hatch Ravager or one base Ravager. Saril never does those. This is the only thing you need to worry about is if Saril runs a few Zerglings across and either cancels your commands and or simply kills the SCV building the command center. Now, we can select Oliveria's SCV. If it's queued up to go across the map, then it's going to scout. And if it queues up to just go straight to the command center and build that, then he's not scouting till the Reaper's out. So if you're an Oliveria fan, hope for this SCV to head across the map. But oh no, he's, he's queued it to build the, the command center. Yep, he's not bringing a second SCV out. Normally you send this guy to scout, you bring your 19th SCV just before the orbital starts down here. To build it. But Oliveira is not scouting. He's playing a little bit greedy. And it is six Zerglings. That's a big commitment. This is a very big commitment. Notice he's only on 16 workers, is several. He's gone six Zerglings into a Queen, into an Overlord, and he will just be droning behind it. But this is a big hit to his income. He already delayed his hatchery. He's now uh, going to be putting workers off minerals onto gas. Only 13 workers out of 16 on minerals this early. But notice the lings go around the edge of the map. We talked about this scenario in the last game. We don't see it too often anymore because so many players SCV scout, so few Zergs pull first. But with how this series has gone, Cyril, I've always said, is a master of planning his strategies. And Oliveira is going to need to react very quickly. So you can't really afford to cancel the command center against a guy as good as Cyril here. I think you need to basically pull eight SCVs, fight with them plus the Marine. He's also got a second Marine building, which will help out here. Oliveira is not actually building that command center. He realizes what's happening. Very quick reaction. As long as he keeps the Marine alive, he's good. If the Marine gets surrounded, that's where things go awry. But notice Serral is pulling the fight away from the natural. So, oh, but that Zergling, he accidentally pulled it back in. If that Zergling was still down there, he could have killed it. Dude, this is actually amazing crisis management right now for Oliveira. And he's going to clean this up without losing any SCVs. He lost a little bit of build time. His command center is a little delayed. But none of this is none of this is game-ending damage, guys. This is uh, you know, Serral committed a lot, didn't really find the damage he wanted to. He has succeeded in disrupting him, but look, a drone almost died that was trying to go out to move a uh, to get the third. So Oliveira denies Serral's third. Serral comes down with a new drone over there. Oh, and Oliveira is gonna delay that as well. Yeah, Serral might just have to take the other base. He really doesn't want to, though. Serral's dead set on taking the triangle. And he will get this base up eventually. Now, he has raised Oliveira's uh, adrenaline. His heart rate's up a little bit. Give him a, an injection of adrenaline. A lot of players, if you just put them on the defense in a stressful position like that, they kind of stress out. Now, that Overlord comes in. I'm surprised the Marines didn't go down to kill it. He built the command center in vision of the Zerglings earlier. So I don't, I don't really think Serral saw anything new there. He's just confirming that command center didn't get canceled or something. There's not some crazy surprise strategy, is there? Hellions are building two at a time. We've got a barracks building a marine and stim before starport, which tells us there's going to be a second, a third barracks, and a two engineering bay. So it's going to be a big macro play. Because he lost a lot of mining time, he doesn't really have as much money. So it's like, oh, all the money is SCVs, orbitals is the priority. Yes, he's building a second barracks now. And it looks like he will go for... Oh, he's going to go 2 one, one He's going to go straight for the starport, actually. Notice this SCV is just waiting for 150 minerals. All right, pretty good timing on the build. Roach Warren is down very early for Serral. Makes me question if that's an aggressive Roach Warren, but notice he's not banking a lot of overlords. He's just building as, as many overlords as he needs to keep producing. So looks like Serral's just playing defensive Roach macro game, just being a little cautious. And I guess that's because he... No, he has Ling Speed, but not that many Queens. Double Engineering Bay does go down behind this. And it is actually... Oh, it's a third barracks. It's not a starport. Oh, okay. Never mind, guys. He's just using the factory as a reactor builder. I'm surprised the Hellions are sitting at home and not poking, but I guess with no wall off, he doesn't want to risk it. 
Overlord's going to poke in. I like the scouting here from Serral. Oliveira not doing much to stop it. I've got to, I've got to criticize that. He's giving him a free scout. Now, it's not like you're doing a crazy special play here. But seeing three barracks finished, he might be able to assume no starport. And if Serral can assume that, he can go, okay. You're going to be just rushing to buy your aggression. I will drone up, get my three bases full, and only then make units. And you can see, that's all he's doing. Fourth hatchery is on the way. Drones, creepers spreading out. He was probably planning something similar, uh, but he'll be able to just know a, a bit more confidence level in where he stops droning. Double Evo Chamber at 5.30. Upgrades will be behind the Terran. But not necessarily for too long. Fourth and fifth barracks are already building here for Oliveira. Double Depot production going up pretty consistently as well. Does need to remember to lower those depots so he can transfer to that third base. You can see now Natural's coming up. Most players like to take two gases at once on the Natural, but you're going to see Oliveira's, you know, like all the top Terrans, they're really good at staggering these gases to get them just when they need them. Downside is they often don't have enough money to make 2-2. The second one, one finishes. Upside is uh, obviously that you get a bit more minerals to speed up your barracks timings. Get your command centers, your barracks, your production, your whole machine rolling a bit faster. Uh, looks like the same style of last game. I'd love to see, like I said, Serral change it up and go roaches. A couple of infestors into Lurker Viper Hydra. Or if you're going to play into a Ling Ultra style, I'd like to see Ling Ultra infestor and add the Banelings after the Ultras. I like Banelings. Banelings are great. I just think Banelings are kind of horrendously inefficient and bad in the, in the interim. And I, I think that we saw that in the last game. I think the Banelings really added very little to Serral's defense. I think his Roach Ravager performed exceptionally. His Zerglings did pretty well, but the Banelings just added so little. Ooh. Serral loses a Roach there. One Marine, seven Zerglings, one Overlord, and a Roach. By the way, I have had some interesting comments on the channel lately. Um, some highly critical, some very positive. I really want to say a big thanks to everyone who's been, you know, providing... Uh, any sort of comments boosted in the algorithm, not to mention, uh, you know, criticism, feedback, any of that stuff. Uh, just a, a reminder, as I was going through and trying to respond to a few pieces of criticism, and please leave a timestamp. If you guys ever hear me misspeak, say something you disagree with, think is wrong, or there's something with my observing where I'm filling the screen up with this or something or missing some action, please just put a timestamp. The way you do that is all you need to do is look at the time in the YouTube video. Say it's 15 minutes and 20 seconds. If you type 15, 20... In your YouTube comment, I can click on that and uh, boost straight to that part in the video. As I do read pretty much every comment on the channel. I mean, not all of them, but most of them. Um, some of them do slip by me, even if I don't get the chance to respond to them. So I, uh, I think it's kind of important to actually, actually, you know, utilize the fact that you guys are basically free feedback on how I can improve my channel. So thank you so much. Um, but please help me actually uh, heed it because sometimes I'm just scratching my head wondering which part of this hour hour long video are they referring to I can't quite figure it out and it's really hard to uh piece it together anyway guys Oliver is doing good cancels the, the fifth base he's denying creep he's got some good multi prong going he's down 10 workers where's his fourth fourth command center is already finished he's got two factories up pumping tanks going up to eight barracks two twos on the way there is vipers plus two carapace same style as last time for several how many roaches ravages 21 roaches three ravages into the ling bane viper but it seems like uh no big scary timing for Oliveira this time around where do you push on this map i'm always curious about that the gold base is pretty exposed this top base is pretty exposed the other four bases can be a little difficult to get close to them i do think this area is really hard to engage into for zerg if you spread your tanks back there Oliveira's is going to try and shove it's a similar timing to last game he doesn't have the supply advantage. I think he was a bit closer to even supply last time. This time he's way down in army supply, which could really favor Serral. Five is coming in with blinding clouds at the perfect timing. Ah, uh, looks like he did only get one blinding cloud. And actually the Marines and the tanks still do pretty well. But despite that, the Viper's going to suck some energy off one of those extractors. Looks like the Liberators came in from behind, or at least one Liberator did. Oh wait, there's one in the bottom as well. Ah, uh, looks like a Queen went down there. Two Liberators going down. This time deflected by a Spore and a Queen on the bottom and some Biles on the top. I think a good choice to pull back here for Oliveira. Lick your wounds, let your units max out. Two twos on the way. And he's been pretty good at remembering all of the steps of his macro. So once again, fifth command center. I want to see concussive shells, marauder production in full swing. Remember that Serral likes to sit on a lower work account than most Zergs. He's only on 80 workers, very similar to the Terran. It means he's going to have a bigger standing army, though. He's looking for that efficiency in the battles. And right now he's found it. 
Anytime you're close to even efficiency with a Terran, it's very good as the Zerg, because you don't need to spend as much money on infrastructure. You're a bit more bare bones in that regard. Creep tumors are free. Hatcheries are a little bit cheaper. 50 minerals effectively than a command center. And you're usually uh, mining a few more bases at a time. So you're spread across them, sucking up those resources a bit more efficiently. Mass bio tank coming down the right side. Those tanks are in the open right now. Olivera's whole army is stuck behind a tank. Oh no! That's such a dumb way to lose this game. If he loses because of that, that's going to be so strong. Half of his army was stuck behind a single siege tank there. A pathing error. I haven't seen that before. The bio was not letting the tank find a better uh, route. And they were just kind of jammed against each other in, in a bit of a hold off. The tank is just sieged there now, blocking that path. Kind of sucks to not have the tank with the army, but at least his army gets down here. I thought this game might be over, but Serral comes in a little bit late. The tanks are siege. The free spread is pretty massive. The marine marauder in a giant angle, but those zerglings are doing a good job of getting top of the tank marauder. There's not many marines in here. And that's a pretty damn good break, man. That was a very good break. Serral is only down about 1,300 resources lost. Yeah, the gold base went down, but that seems okay because there's ghosts, double tank production, including a third factory now. 3-3... Three, three, there's a lot of expensive things being built for Terran, and, and Oliveira kind of maybe needs to just chill and back off for a little bit. The Vikings, I love the Viking edition, by the way. So far, they only killed one Viper, but even that, just, just killing Vipers every time there's a battle and not letting them recycle is a very good way to limit the Zerg efficiency, something that Oliveira has clearly planned for in the latter stages of this game. Extra command center building on the fourth. That's a lot of Ling Bane, though. If you don't have any support, that planetary is on its own. It could get boom, boom. Over in the middle side, that tank's getting surrounded. The SCVs are just going to try to run out. Thankfully, the SCVs escape, and that command center cancels. But a planetary going down is still a planetary going down. That's still rough for the Terran player, losing depots and gases as well. Down here in the right side, a few Zerglings split off. Oliveira is more than ready for it. Left side, there's still a pack of Ling Bane there. Oliveira is going to siege a tank and chill for a moment. Anabolic Synthesis plus two melee plus three carapaces on the way. Olivera's supply not looking that impressive. Losing that command center as well as the building one was very painful. That's why I don't like building command centers in, in risky positions. You know, building them back here in the center on the high ground, floating them out, I would prefer. But that base being denied, this is what Olivera needed right now. The gold base is up and mining for several as well. As these workers start mining here, you're going to see his income start to pull ahead. And remember, especially when there's no mules dropping... Terran income struggles to match that of Zerg at this stage of the game. Um, Scan does see no rich gas on the left side. Oliveira seems to be adopting a bit more of a turtley stance. He's got five tanks, 14 marauders, 28 marines, four ghosts, and now two widow mines. He's trying to build a few more widow mines, which I absolutely love. I adore that. I think widow mines mixed in with a bio tank army make it so much more solid. He's sending a triple drop down the right side. I think the Zergling may have spotted that, though. Serral may realize a lot of your units aren't at home right now. And if you're not at home, that's an opening for me. Triple drop in the right. He's going to run into the Zerglings at the same time. But the blinding clouds are devastating. The tank's getting wrecked. Ghost trying to pull back. Banelings are on top of them. There's Lings in on top of both bases in the bottom right. Yes, Oliveira is going to take out a base. But Serral doesn't care so much about losing one expansion. These tanks on the right side are holding their own. Uh, third factory goes down. Second factory is about to fall as well. you got to lift that Oliveira, but of course he's too busy microing. It goes down on the other side of the map. He has to pick up and save those units from the Zergens and Queens. Siege tank starting to fall over here. A bit of bio trickling back to try and stabilize. He needs a bit more of that bio to get out of these buildings, but Oliveira is broke right now. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Mass Zerglings coming in. Serral does take a pretty chunky Widow Mine to the face, but that's a lot of Zerglings, and it's just a low Marine count right now. It doesn't matter if they have good upgrades. So does Serral. He's got his plus three Carapace. His Zergling Baneling Ravager is starting to take over. And Oliveira, ever since he lost that fourth base, it was a slippery slope. Looks like Oliveira just needed to pull into a defensive stance a little bit earlier on this game. And I got to go back to that first big push he was doing. And those units getting stuck, man. That, I haven't seen that before. Yeah, so we had this nice setup. Then he unseiges, and he's told this army to move forward, and the tank can't fit through, but they can. And they're, they're just kind of locked in a pattern where occasionally a marine squeezes through. That's unfortunate, because if he had this army all together a bit earlier, he might have been able to set up a bit more of an aggressive push, kind of maybe force Serral into a worse fight. Because you can see when this fight happened, these marines on this side just kind of get bomb-bombed, boom-boomed, and uh, his army, a few of his tanks are a little slow to kind of siege up as well. Now, whether they would have got there earlier or not, 
We don't know. But that siege tank definitely could have been there. And did feel like his army was maybe just a little bit more spread out than it needed to be in this fight. Not sure how impactful that was, but uh, definitely a unique, weird little catch on the map over there. Super odd. GG, well played. All right, going on to Oceanborn, Oliveira's second map pick here. So far, the players are winning all of their own map picks. Several yet to show any sort of 15-15 action. It's all been 13 Overlord into 16 Hatchery or 16 Spawning Pool in that last game. Oliver handled it pretty well. And maybe it's just Alcyon being Several's map pick, a bit harder to find the push angle. But the first pushes just did not seem to uh, have the same sort of uh, fear to them. I think Several scouting everything that was happening also made him very comfortable and Really just didn't look worried at all in that early stage. Oceanborn's a map where there's not so much space across it, and that means Terran pushes are scary. It also means in the end game, if the Terran can get infrastructure all across the middle, you know, you got planetary here, planetary here, planetary here, planetary here. It, it's very hard for the Zerg to mine out any of these middle bases. And uh, as a Terran, you can kind of just crawl forward and win through long-term efficiency. Now that's that's end game, right? It's also the early pushes. Is it going to be tempting for Oliveri here to try a big committed two base push? Shove him, get him with one of those old, you know, two siege tank, 30 marines with stim shields and one one. An old Maru special, perhaps. Orbital Reaper is going to go for the SCV scout this game. After the last game, Oliveri doesn't want any more surprises. And perfectly timed SCV gets here right on 400 minerals to start that command center. Now, Serral is mining a fair bit of gas. And you always look for, if they're just playing an old school advanced clash opening, you want to transfer workers down about now. So they get there as the natural finishes, but these workers are staying on gas. Serral seems to just be opting for that format, just saying, no, let's just play super safe. Let's have the 100 gas nice and early. And as he gets to 88 gas, this is where he can start pulling workers off and starting link speed. What a noob, guys. He pulled off one trip too late. He mined four extra gas. Serral is a noob, confirmed. Reaper's going to be poking in. Let's see what taxi can get this game. Serral's been pretty good at defending it with things like Spore Crawler Trick so far, being the most damage he's able to get. Focusing down the Zerglings, not too possible. Just going to be chill for the moment. Wants to get that third command center started on time. Nice. Ooh, Creep Tumor actually goes down very early for Serral. And Oliveira tries to get a Zergling, but unable. Third hatchery is down. Oliveira has seen that. And it looks like the Overlord is once again going to sneak around the back door. This is that back door Overlord I was telling you guys about, where if you build a, a depot down here, you can't cross without you knowing about it. Looks like seeing that mule, he doesn't want to risk going back there. Interesting. One other way you can scout exactly what the Terran opening was as a Zerg is if you come in here about 3 minutes 30, if there's no depots here, you know it's a 3 command center build usually. Because the 3rd command center build, that's going to put you up to a 61 supplier. And that means you don't need any depots for a long time. You don't need to start building that wall off until after four minutes. Whereas otherwise, you'd be starting that depot sometime about now. Somewhere about 30, 30, 30 to 40 supply, 35 to 40 supply. So if you scout in at four minutes, you see no wall off. Guess what? They've got a third command center. They're investing in a third command center. It can't be that aggressive. 400 minerals going towards a big economy. 550 once the orbital starts. Vikings on the way here behind this. He's going to go hunting some overlords. Reaper Hellion poking around. Creepers coming out. Looks like Link Speed has completed. Serral is just going heavy Queen Zergling. Five Queens are out. Two more building right now. So he's going to have seven Queens out by four minutes 25. That's an impressive timing. It means he's going to have plenty of time to gather Transfuse Energy by five minutes, which is when a lot of scary Hellbat timings hit. He should have multiple Transfusers available. Viking will find itself a single Overlord, and it does scout the Banshee and the Cloak upgrade, but... You don't know it's cloaked. Technically, it could be a raven, but why would you make the upgrade for the raven? I am a little surprised to see Viking into Banshee. To me, this feels like a very low-impact build. It's a massive investment in tech. 
I already feel like two Banshees with Cloak is kind of slow and overrated, but you squeeze a Viking in first, and they still scout that you're doing this, and it seems like it's going to be a very weird choice to continue with that. I keep expecting him to cancel it, and he's not. Oliveira apparently saying, no, I really want to go for this Cloak and hopefully catch you thinking that this is a fake out and that I'm going to cancel it when I'm not. Zerglings come in, Hellions say no. Shut that one down. I think Serral saw the third base. Indeed he did. Double engineering bays down here for Oliveira. Notice he never puts it in the wall. Even though the engineering bays are a much more solid wall than the depots, you don't want to lose those upgrades. So you want those in a more protected location. First Banshee's out. Second Banshee is building. Fourth and fifth barracks are constructing. Sending workers from the natural to build the buildings... I understand why people do it, but I feel like just build them in the natural if you're going to do that. I don't like them taking so long to walk up there. This is a weird thing a lot of the top Terrans have started doing because their main is already 16 out of 16 workers. They don't want to disrupt the saturation, but it does come with a drawback. That is just the delay of moving the units up there. This was a weird first depot wall off location down here. He's going to need a few more. He wants to keep this up. Oh no, the Viking flew in and died to the Spore Crawler. Oh, that's unfortunate. Only got himself one kill. Alien's on the right side. Is he diving? Oh, that's a crazy move. Oliveira's got a bit of a excitement right now. A protuberance in the Terran uh, crotchal armor there. He does manage to contain it. Pulls himself back. A couple Zerglings waiting down there in the low ground, ready to be an annoyance. Fourth and fifth barracks on the way. 1-1 one, one upgrades are about 50 seconds complete. Several's 30 seconds complete. So he's down about 20 seconds in the upgrades. Very standard in this matchup. Fourth hatchery in the bottom, and here we go, guys. There word. Spore crawl is actually built in every base, but there's no overseer out here right at this moment. Oh, he flies into the exact same spore crawler. I'm gonna nickname that spore crawler Bane of the Terran. Damn. We better call that 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 that's an Islam Makachev spore crawler over there. That is holy crud. Banshee's a bit of a fan favorite here for Oliveira, but so far one of them has been knocked out. Nine drones, it's not bad, but it's definitely not great. Sarah's already at 74 workers. you got to realize, guys, if you kill nine drones at the three-minute mark, it's massive game-changing damage. You kill nine drones now, uh, 74 workers. He's mining so much, he doesn't care. He's like, oh, 450 minerals? That's like that's like 13 seconds of mining, you know? It's it's just, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's, it's actually less than 13 seconds. I'm not good with numbers, guys. It's more like 10 seconds. <laughs> Anyways... Uh, 1-1 one, one upgrades coming in. Armory's on the way as well as Second Factory behind this for Oliveria's fourth command center is coming. Looks like he's willing to play a macro game right now. And that is very brave. Still a creep tumor up here. Marines and Hellions gonna try and fight these Zerglings. He didn't let the Hellions fire at all yet. Tries to get into that choke point. Ooh. Does save what he can, but that was a good fight for Serral. Serral's not too far behind and the work is lost. Banshee is still down here. I'd love it to poke in, pick up a few drones, pull back on this left base, but... Oliveira is busy with the macro. He's got another drop going north to join up with that one. Three more barracks coming in. Those will be adding tech labs and going for the marauders. The 2-2 two -two is quite delayed for him. We've already got plus two melee started for Serral. And once again, Serral starts his 1-1 one -one upgrades 20 seconds behind Oliveira. So far, starting one of his plus two upgrades earlier. Carapace is the more important one. But there we go. It starts at the exact same time as the 2-2 two -two of Terran. Upgrades are locked in at close to even. A siege tank rallying across the map gets caught. Oh, that is big damage right there. Serral is looking so confident. Oliveira is failing to inspire fear right now. Look at the way Serral's moving his army. He's simply sensing, I have more stuff. I am the big boy right now. I am the one who can run forward and shake my axe in your face. I am the one who can pound my warhammer on the ground and chant for battle. And you're the one who's going to feel a tremor in your boots, a quake within your chest. Because you know... That just beyond the horizon lies an endless swarm of Zerg controlled by an absolute beast from Finland. Two Banelings are also burrowing on the ramps. You can see the confidence for Serral. He, he, he pulls back into a defensive stance, adds more drones, adds Hydralisk upgrades coming in behind this. He, he's going to drone up that fifth base. He's already got four bases, eight or seven gases, sorry. He's missing a gas here. Overlord speed coming in as well. Tanks are building. There are two factories. One with a tech lab. One with a reactor. I like that there's a sensor tower coming in. Always nice to get a bit of early warning of what's going on. But uh, fourth base will get established. Losing the SCVs on the fourth. Not pulling them all away was unfortunate. Oliveira is going to try to poke forward a little. But he's got to be real cautious here. 
He doesn't kill a single unit there. That's the efficiency of Serral. He's not going to give you many freebies. You run forward. Guess what? You got to pick up and pull back. Infestation pet on the way. Serral's main base a little undersaturated, funnily enough, right now. But better under than over. More important to mine out these forward bases. 81 drones to 71 SCVs. Concussive shells is complete. Ghost Academy on the way as well. What I love about a Ghost Academy, honestly, is mostly getting a few Vipers for EMP. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, beautiful Burrowed Baneling. Sorry for the camera angle. Getting blocked by the Metavax, but you can see most of the Marines did die there. Good, efficient build. Oh, on the left. He just got one there as well. I don't think that hit nearly as much. As you can see, there's still plenty of Marines and Marauders left over. But Units Lost Tab is right now 800 resources in favor of several. And we always talk about how Terran is naturally more efficient than Zerg. Especially when you're playing Ling Bane, you are not meant to be more efficient than Terran. That is a sign that you are not just beating them, you are dominating them in this game. Oliveira has to play Serral's game. He has to slow down and look for that efficiency. Let's see what he can find. Let's catch a few Banelings coming in from the left. The concussive shell is really helping that to slow them down. And he does scan those two Banelings. Nicely done. On the top side, Sensor Tower is going to be aware of a big army of Ling Bane coming forward. I like him just trying to take this high ground. I think taking this area is going to be really important. I think if you control this high ground and put a sensor tower there as well, it really limits the Zerg's vision. And I think when you're on four bases, that's actually the next goal, is get a planetary and a tank or two up here, because then it kind of covers this area from the high ground. It kind of covers that attack going for you. And it, center control is very important in late game. Starcraft, big fight in the south. Serral tries to ambush him. Oliveira reacts very well and actually gets an amazing fight. That was really good. You can see he's back in the lead now in the unit's lost tab. There's some Widow Mines in the middle of the map as well, which Cyril has to watch out for. He's going to lose this southern base, but Oliveira is actually really pushing his advantage. Oliveira wants to take the fight to Cyril. He's got a big army pushing forward, but he's got to be careful with those Marauders deep on creep. Oh, I like that. The Marauders tanking, the Widow Mine getting a big shot off. A few Marauders still do go down there. Oliveira's got to be careful about venturing too far forwards. Look at the tank spready, though. That's a good tank spready. One tank on the south. Didn't siege up yet, though. Slight mistake there. And, ooh, here we go. Siege tank does push back the Ling Bane on the north. Sensor Tower is making it awkward for Serral. Serral's got to be careful about that Widow Mine on the right. Widow Mine on the right. Widow Mine on the left. Widow Mine's everywhere. Banelings will detonate, I think, to take those out. But the Widow Mine's cleaning up the Ling Bane in the counterattack. Oliveira marching forward. Dude, Oliveira's on fire today. Yes, he was inefficient. Yes, he was getting owned in the trades earlier. But there were only small trades. Those weren't game deciders. Oh, it looks like now the numbers are getting whittled down there. Oliveira's got to be careful. It's a massive link counterattack. He's trying to push forward on the aggression. He's getting a lot of drone kills, but he's got to defend that mass Zerg and counterattack. Bane link coming forward. He's looking, though. Oliveira with a quick response. The Viper comes forward there as well. Third base is getting ransacked. Lings are uh, trying to crack the natural wall. Marine Marauder trying to defend. Liberator sieging up there. He's going to need to rewall. That is so many Zerglings with 2 2 and Adrenal Glands on the south side. So the army continues forward. The Marine Marauder ghost. Pulling back into the siege tanks. Good fight so far for Oliveira. But oh my god, his production's being breached. Oliveira has controlled this push on the front so well. Dude, I actually think Oliveira did so good on the front. But the fact that he just underestimated the Zergling count. He just didn't have enough Marines. And this has actually been a pattern in this series. Remember, he didn't have enough Marines in the previous games as well. There was a few fights where he didn't really have any firepower. It was all tanks, marauders, ghosts, widow mines spread out. But no raw firepower. And that's actually one of the hardest things as a Terran player I find in my own games as well. Having the right marine count together. It's cost him. Because where, where was his production? Why did he not have marines popping out to defend it? And I think he was just spending all of his money on more expensive units. Damn. Serral gets a beautiful 3-1 there with a giant ling backstab. That was really cool. GG well played. I got to go back a little bit though and look at when those links came across the map. We got to look at where was the production. So we do have seven Marines building at this point when this all started, but that's not that many Marines, right? And there is money floating. So we could argue there could be a few more Marines and Marauders queued up, especially as these, uh, like this reactor barracks only has one. These guys aren't building right now. So it does seem like this kind of caught Oliveira at a weak point. I think we should go back a little bit further to really get the context on this. And this is I guess here at this point, right? Because it looked really good for Oliveira. He's rallying forward, defends the counter. This is... Okay, so what happens is, is I think Oliveira gets overconfident after that. Serral splits even more of his army. And Oliveira thinks, well, I crushed your, your counterattack. Therefore, you're stuck on the defense. And Serral said, no, no, no. I see you're rallying your army out. I'm going to escalate. So he actually catches the entire rally. And that's always really bad. If you lose your rally outside your base, that means you don't even have... Like, imagine if you had a tank and two Marauders here. 
these lings are like, yes, they can run to the third, but like they're already kind of defended to a certain extent. But because he lost that tank, those couple of marines and marauders, this is now so much harder. And let's see, because he was so busy now microing at home, microing the front, there's a lot of things happening. It's it's very human to miss a little bit of marine production here. And, and you can see, yeah, in this sort of scenario, one of the first things you have to do is select your barracks, I would say, and really like hold that marine marauder key down for a second. And he doesn't seem to quite do that. You can see he builds a few more marauders, a few more marines, but he actually needed to do a couple more because you can see these barracks actually aren't double producing this whole time. So even there, he kind of like stems out, loses his rally outside of his wall again. And then he ends up with like just not that many. It's like at any point, if he has like 14 Marines in a blob on this ramp, he can defend those Zerglings because there's no surface area, right? And I think in this scenario, it'd be, very, it'd be somewhat playable, especially if he didn't lose the 20 SCVs. But even if he lost the 20 SCVs, he's got a fifth command center. He's putting several back on four bases, technically five, but Cyril's also losing a ton of workers. Like, I actually feel like he did pretty damn well in the fight. So hats off to Oliveira from a bad start for looking pretty good, but shout out to Cyril for just escalating the counter attack. And on a small map, it just kind of caught Oliveira with his pants down. A little bit slow in his production, not quite respecting the link counter attack. Cyril gets it done and he gets the three to one, goes to the semifinals. GG, well played.